what we wanted to do was create a more elegant solution to having the power of software, which is very real. I love using software, but also integrates the, um, you know, the keyboard a lot, the, or rather the hardware a lot more efficiently. I remember the first time I got a piece of software and I messed with the virtual instrument and I changed things and then I saved that project and I brought it back and all my settings were exactly the same stored in my musical project, right? So with this guy, what we decided to do was integrate the hardware to that because I remember also thinking, God, I wish my hardware worked the same way where I didn't have to save a file off that had all my sounds in here or I didn't have to go through and say, oh, I have to type in program changes, I have to type in effect settings, I have to type in, uh, see it's so click, it, 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 it's slick, it just did it, right, when I was talking here. Um, in fact, I, I can tell you what that says up there because what it did was it took all my sounds that I have in front of me here, natural grand, velo growl, arch top, jazz flugel, tenor max, oak custom, three of those, right? That's what it says up there, you, if you can kind of read it. It's kind of hard to see, it's a small thing, but um, if I go to another guy here, it's going to change everything again because of how I have it set up. So now all the sounds have changed to the sounds I have here. So this would be a situation where I started here and I want to finish on the computer. But that's what I mean, that kind of integration where I can save a single file that calls up all of my settings in here is pretty slick. So this is what's called a VST editor. So it shows up, this is a VST instrument. So that's a software instrument right here, right? Virtual instruments. Comes up, it'll ask me if you want to create a MIDI track, sure. And there's a, there's a virtual instrument there. And you can go through here and you can edit stuff in the virtual instrument. Or I can do it off of here actually, my remote this guy. Any change I make inside the motif is instantly seen here. So let's say I want to take this sound here, right? That's the one I was looking at. It's right in front of me right here. And I want to go over here to... Uh, you know, I think red's not the right color. Change it to yellow, maybe you can see it a little better. So I wanna edit the filter. There's the filter right here, okay? See it? So wherever my hand is on the motif, actually, let me go to this one here. Filter. Bass machine. This one here. Um, mixing, voice edit. Uh, filter. Okay, do you see the screen up there? See the cutoff frequency changing? From the resonance? Right? There's velocity sensitivity. Let's change this one here. So it's simultaneous and bi-directional. I can change things on the right here if I'm my hands are close to the synth here. Or if I like to work in a graphic environment, I can just go over here and say cutoff frequency and it's changing exactly there in the screen. And all I have to do to save this stuff is just save the project. And then when I bring it back up, it'll send all that information back to the motif so that all my edits that I've done, either here or here, are saved in this controlling sequencer in one file. That is a very powerful thing. How many people have worked with software sequencers? If you haven't done that, then it's like, oh, I don't know. You don't have to, it's just something that in the future, if you want to go there, because most people, you know, we do lots of customer surveys, we send things out and we say, um, what are some things you'd like to do with your keyboard? And about the number one or two thing is, I'd like to hook it to the computer. And the vast majority of people don't really understand exactly what they want to do, but they know that it can be done, and I will try this one day. You know, especially when you see music printed. Yeah, sure. Does the Multi uh, VST only work with Cubase? This part of it does. That's correct. Or can you use another? You can use another DAW. And I, in fact, I'll show you actually how, how slick it does work with another one, just if you wanted to know, because I have another one on here. But this VST style integration, this is strictly a Steinberg Yamaha thing. Now, everybody else that we have, we have uh, what? Logic, Performer, Sonar, Cubase, and Pro Tools, right? Um, so the first three outside of, so Performer, Sonar, Logic, that's pretty simple to set up because they are um, three companies that know that people use different devices. Like you could be a performer person and decide you love how the mic preamps on something else where can you can grab and buy that one. 
So those three are very well integrated to the, this type of remote controls thing. Because if you notice in here, I can do all this to control the remote. If I add tracks in here, well, I can right here, select tracks that I want to solo and so on. So this type of remote stuff, I can easily set up in Logic, Performer, and Sonar. With Pro Tools, because Pro Tools generally likes to play in its own pool with its own friends, its own company stuff, it's not so easy to set that up exactly. However, you can do it because I think on the install CD on Pro Tools you can install the Mac EQE emulation, which this is very similar to. So I can get it to work with Pro Tools, it's just not as elegant as it is with the other three and it's not as well integrated as it is with Cubase. So in here, if I go Control, see where it says DAW type Cubase? Logic, Sonar, Digital Performer. The Pro Tools take some tweaking, but I'll just switch to Logic here, so Store. Now Logic is up here. So Logic Control is what it saw there. I had another product called an ONX that I was using with Logic, so I remembered that one. But now that I have Logic set up, I hit Remote, It's not using my interface, but I can set it to do my audio interface too. So the answer to your question is yes, it does work with other things, but it, it's just remote control and then audio out of the firewire. The actual real integration between the hardware software part of it, that's a QAs only thing. Cool? I won't spend too much time, I don't want to make this time. So, Okay, so the last thing, so we got computer connectivity, real integration, compelling integration, stuff to make you write music, help you write music, great sounds, right? The last thing, and a new thing that we added to the motif is this little guy right here. Okay, this is a flashboard. So there are two different types of memory that we're working with here. RAM memory, random access memory, is very fast writing, fast reading memory. So that um, has always been good for two things. And the Motif, it's great for the integrated sampler because that needs to be pretty quick to load and play back and address. Um, for voices though, RAM has some drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is when, you, when I turn off the machine, all the audio I did, unless I saved it to a USB flash, disappears. And I have to reload it every time. So, which is fine if you're talking about, you know, a couple megs, but if you're talking like, you know, two gigabytes of memory, that takes some time. And a lot of times, time is not, uh, you know, something that's a uh, uh, simple thing for, especially touring musicians. So I talk to a lot of guys that are out there touring that say, hey man, you know, I love Moti, I play it every time, but you know, we have a lot of custom samples that we use in the show, and I can have, you know, a gigabyte of memory, and man, sometimes our plane is late, and, or we, we have just a limited amount of time to do a sound check, and I go up there, and I'm stuck with a 20 minute, you know, 15 minute load time to get all my samples in. And that's, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time on, on the old, on the XS, it did. So, you show them this and you go, okay, well, you can buy these in, in one gigabyte or 512 megabyte for a total of two gigabytes of flash memory in here. And you can mix and match them, you can have a, a, a 512 and a one gigabyte, it doesn't matter. And you can store all your data, your sample data, the stuff that takes up most of the time to load here, and then you load just a file that points at that sample data, which is the, the voice data. And that is a super fast load. That's like, you know, 30 seconds to load basically your entire thing to customize your keyboard. And so, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, well, well what am I going to load on? Well, we have, when you buy one of these, you get about 560 megabytes of data, like the S700 piano, there's some other cool sounds that they added to this. One of them, I remember the, the muted trumpet, here's a good example right here. This is a, a, a decent muted trumpet that's in the XS, if I can find it here. That's called Legend Mute. So when I think muted trumpet, <laughs> Harmon Mute is what that is. So I think of Miles Davis when I hear that sound. He would play with the harmony. But this one, whoever they sampled, it was perfect intonation, perfect articulation. Which is fine, but not really how Miles sounded. Not very breathy. It's a very direct sound. So the flashboard, 
gives you this one. Let me find it here. It's called Trumpet Mute Soft. This one. Really quality stuff that we're just, we let you have when you buy. You have to buy the flash memory to get it. There's trombones. There's, there's a whole bunch of, uh, if you need a trombone, that's a funny one. <laughs> a friend of mine told me a joke the other day. What's the difference between a dead snake in the road and a dead trombone player? Snake was going to a gig. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Unless you're a trombone player and it's like, hey, man. Hey, man, that's, that's not funny. That's not funny at all. Um, let's see. I think I have my favorites here, don't I? Um, a bunch of ethnic stuff is in here as well. Way at the bottom here, I think, is where I put those. Oh, we have a DTX drum kit. We added the, the old kit from the DTX. A little different sample. A little different stuff. That comes on the flash. But there's all of these, like an oud. Anyway, so if you won't need this sitar. With velocity when you strike it. That's just a fun sound to play with. And a different one. Or a tambura. All of those, if you need, I'm supposed to hear the sound all you gotta do is go down to the beach and find a dude. And it's like, what's up? What's up? A balaban. I had to look this one up on Wikipedia because I didn't even know. I think it's from Azerbaijan originally, that blown instrument. There's, and then they turn it in. synth sound in here. All that stuff comes when you get the flash. The best thing about this, though, is right before the motif came out, the XF was announced, actually, I went to a meeting with the director of marketing and the guy who was the music production manager who got um, people from Garretton, uh, the Garretton uh, company they make, uh, Gary Garretton, is that his name? He's a uh, sound designer who's made an orchestra that you can buy as a software instrument, a uh, big band that you can buy as a software instrument. Um, they're making a version of the Garretton Symphony, Symphonic Orchestra, for a Yamaha motif for the Flash. Um, there's another one, Sonic Reality, another sound design company. In fact, I can see, isn't that a Sonic Reality sign that's up there next to the IK Multimedia? That company is going to design some sounds for this board here. Um, it was a r really interesting meeting to actually have that with these people that have kind of been historically doing hardware stuff and software stuff. The one thing that's cool about the music production guy um, that is the Yamaha person there is that he's done a lot of this himself. He is a great sound designer. Some of these sounds are him in here. He not only is a marketing guy, he's also a really good synth um, designer, player. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. So that's the benefit of the new Flash thing. Before it was all in RAM and it was shared RAM. So yeah, this is a better solution.